Welcome, everybody. As I told you, every single Wednesday night, I bring you the price report where I interview someone that's amazing from around the blockchain, someone that's done something amazing for cryptocurrency, maybe created a new product, a trader, or even helped the entire space move forward. Today, I'm with Drew, who has started Presend. Drew, thank you so much for coming on to the show. I found your project about a couple of months back. I've been wanting to get you on. I have some questions to ask you. Some people have asked some things they want me to ask you too as well. So I'm excited to have you on. Introduce yourself. Tell us kind of how you got into crypto and uh, how's your day going? How are you feeling? Yeah, it's all good. You know, I live in beautiful, sunny Miami. So it, most days are, are not bad days, right? Um, it'll randomly rain on you, but that's about it. So I just appreciate, you know, humble appreciation for just being on the channel. Obviously, everybody that shows up, you know, thank you so much. Uh, I am Drew Wolfer. If you guys didn't already know, I have a YouTube channel kind of centered around cryptocurrency. I also have created a couple of businesses inside of cryptocurrency, which one of them is Wolfer Finance. It was like my flagship, what kind of made my name, right? And it's a blockchain infrastructure company that does master and validator nodes. And then we're also getting into cryptocurrency mining and things of that sort. We're talking real nodes like Ethereum, Phantom, you know, Opera or Phantom Opera, the AVAXs and Fluxes of the world, not the fake nodes that everybody was pumping back in 2021. Um, and uh, yeah, so we kind of use that as a flagship to launch into software because I had someone kind of approach me, which is now my co-founder, Larry. And he came to me with this wonderful idea. And I was like, okay, I think we can make this into something, but I want to be able to patent it, right? So that we can protect ourselves, uh, our business model and things of that sort. So that's exactly what we did. We built pre-send. Now it is here. Um, we kind of use the YouTube channel to like launch us into being able to market it, fund it, whatever it may be. And you know, everything I'm, I'm just blessed to be here, man. So I appreciate you bringing me on the channel. Yeah, you know, the main reason I started my channel because I was lost, basically lost in life. You know what I mean? Didn't know really yeah. where to go. I was looking for a mentor. Um, had a good dad that taught me the basics and the fundamentals, but like times were moving. You know, my dad was born in 1946. Like there was a lot of questions and answers that I, I was looking for. How to use the internet, right? To master your, your future. Um, how to create an online business. You know, all these things that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so I found mentors online, people that were already doing it. And, yep. but, and then I then so I, you know, wanted people not to be lost. Right. And when I use this word loss, it's important because then we get into crypto and then people lose cryptocurrency, right? They send it to the wrong address. I was one of the first people to do a MetaMask class, even two years ago, which I can't believe now teaching people how to send money, teaching people how to swap on like, let's say phantom swap, go to spooky swap, right? What, what is boo? What are all these new coins? What's going on? And a bunch of times, you know, someone would send a coin on the wrong chain, especially AVAX had a C chain, B chain. And People would get confused. Yeah. They wouldn't sure what they were doing. And a lot of times it was, un they, they couldn't get it back. You know, uh, once they sent that 500 bucks, sometimes I'd always say, say, hey, send a small amount first. Your company, presend.io, your project, this thing that you've created, it basically can stop that dead in its tracks, right? So the second I heard this, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. This guy is doing what I'm doing, but he took it to the next level and he built a product. Explain what presend is to the layman, to someone that has never heard about it. I kind of touched on it right now, but you're going to do a better job. How did you yeah. come across it? Um, again, you saying you, you bumped into your business partner, but what else kind of sparred this? You know, were you already coding before and stuff of that nature? But I, I, I tend to load up the questions so one at a time. But yeah, I'm so interested in in what pre search is. What is it? What does it do? Explain it from from the basic point um, all the way up. Yeah. So essentially where Presend started was my business partner basically lost money, right? And he was like, this is dumb. I don't see this as being something that should potentially happen, right? Because in, in traditional finance, you don't send your money and wire it from, you know, JP Morgan Chase to Bank of America and just accidentally lose it, right? That doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. But some for some reason in cryptocurrency, it does. And it's kind of like this. I always go back to this example, but it's a really good example. Is say you go into Starbucks and you're ordering your coffee. You accidentally pull out your Apple iTunes gift card and you swipe it. In crypto, it's like when you swipe that, it takes the money, but you don't get your coffee. And it says you have to, now you have to pull out your debit card and pay us with something that we do accept. That's what happens in crypto. Whereas in traditional finance, you would try to swipe your Apple iTunes gift card and it'd be like, that's not a form of payment. Like, Give us something that we actually accept. Whereas in blockchain, they like say, for example, Coinbase, you're like, hey, I want to send $100 over to Coinbase. And you're like, I have BUSD. I'm going to send my BUSD to my Coinbase exchange. Coinbase exchange doesn't support BUSD. Why would it? Because it is 
BUSD and Binance uh, coin are basically from their main competitor, Binance, right? So you would actually, they would say they accepted that and the blockchain would say that that was successful and they would never credit you your money. So then you would have to send over something on, you know, it may be potentially USDC on Ethereum's blockchain into uh, Coinbase. And then, you know, you just lost a hundred bucks for literally no reason. And is it recoverable? Maybe. But sometimes it takes, even if it is recoverable, it usually takes like six months and you have to pay 20% fee for them to even think about it. So no one's going to recover your $500 for you if they're only going to make a hundred bucks off of it. They might try to do it for a hundred thousand, 10,000, whatever. Um, so essentially what PreSend does is we have a patent pending on this um, transaction process. So I can't really go too far in depth on what exactly moves behind the scenes, but we are a wallet transaction security software that kind of sits on top of your wallet and then you connect to it and you go through our process, but you keep custody of all of your assets. That's the main thing that I preach to people is keep custody of your own assets. And that's exactly what PreSend does. It's read only. Whenever you go to send that transaction, you actually have to approve it inside of your connected wallet. Then PreSend runs the pre-checks, which is to make sure that you're sending on the correct blockchain to a correct blockchain to a compatible address that the blockchain and the tokens that you're sending on that blockchain are accepted by the recipient, right? So if you're sending to Coinbase and you tell PreSend, I'm sending Binance coin on Binance Smart Chain to Coinbase Exchange, it's going to say, don't do that. You will lose your money. So that's where PreSend comes in and really stops people from losing those funds. And we see it happen a lot inside of and coming into and out of those centralized exchanges. And with the more that we're wanting to see crypto adoption come, everybody's screaming, I want the 250,000 Bitcoin. Everybody wants the million dollar Bitcoin, right? How do we get there? Institutional money, for the uh, like for your father, for example, bringing his 401k, his pension, and you know people's retirement incomes into crypto. That's how we get there. But how do we do that? If you can call up your dad and say, "Hey, dad, you could potentially lose your money if you sent USDC on from a Polygon wallet to an Ethereum wallet, and poof, there goes all of your he's not, uh, he's retirement. Not, he's funds. not with it. He's not with it immediately. Yeah, it just, not even. Yeah, he's yeah. already gonna say no." And we can't expect BlackRock to do it either, right? How are they going to bring in a billion dollars, a trillion dollars into this market? They simply won't do it until the technology is in place. So that's why we brought out Precent, and that's why that technology is in its infancy right now, but it will be in place. So we're going to go out and try and partner with the MetaMask, the Ledgers, the Coinbases, Krakens, Operas, Braves um, of the world and make sure that this stuff no longer happens. Now, could some of them maybe grab your software on the back end, never say it's you guys, but you'll still take a cut? Like, you know, because they may not want to know it's pre-send, but they want to have that same 100%. security, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 100%. That's exactly what we want. If they don't want to, if they just want to say, hey, we're protecting you, that's all you need to know. That is perfectly fine with us. As long as you are protecting people and utilizing the technology in the proper manner, uh, yeah, we'll absolutely license it out to anybody that is willing to use it. What I like about your company and your project, what you're working on, is it takes two of the things that I love investing in. Simple yet complex. It takes a simple problem that's not that easy to solve, right? But it's simple. It's like I want more ketchup on my hot dog. You know what I mean? It's like I or whatever, you know, it's like it's not a it's not a it's not a hugely complex thing to solve, you know. People are sending money, it's going to the wrong place. Can we stop that yep. from happening? You know, it happens to the guy, he's like, I'm smart enough to figure this out. I'm hiring some coders or I'm a coder and I'm gonna work on this until I get it right. It's something that should have been done, honestly, from the very beginning. Like, you know what I mean? It's like almost like the people at MetaMask should have sat down and did anyone raise their hand in the boardroom and say, but what happens and don't we have a way to, yeah. you know? And I guess they were like, nah, yeah. just just put it out anyway. You know, <laughs> like they'll 100%. figure it out on their own. You know, it's like, yeah. um, so, you know, even I've lost. Yeah, it's technically Ethereum's fault, you know, if you think about it, because most of the chains that people are losing money on, they're Ethereum virtual machines, EVM, which basically just means like what an Ethereum virtual machine is, is anything built on top of Ethereum on their blockchain, Polygon, Phantom Opera, Binance Smart Chain, AVAX, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's where, uh, you know, I always say, I always say it like this, like say that you have a twin, right? And your USDC on Polygon, but your twin is USDC on Ethereum, right? You have your own social security number that identifies who you are as a person, right? Even though you might look the same, you might even have the same name. And then your twin has a different social security number that identifies who they are as a person, right? That is 
the same thing with these coins. On an Ethereum USDC token, it has a totally different contract address and um, blockchain that it's on. Same thing with Polygon, different, uh, we'll call it social security number. So if you send the wrong social security, if you send to the wrong social security number, you lost your money. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's like the person isn't the same person. I That happened yep. to me, even though I was well-learned in this, I remember when they came out with, uh, there's BUSD, and then there was like yep. pegged BUSD, right? Which was like, yeah. and they came both, and they were both on Binance Smart contract address, but they had like a slightly, like one didn't come with the logo, one did. It was like, so I'd send BUSD yep. back, it's not there. Like, oh, you got to, that you're sending pegged BUSD. Yeah. And I mean, yep. I eventually figured it all out, but I mean, I can't tell you how many people just paid a hundred dollars an hour for me to zoom with them and to go through their, their, you know, their MetaMask and find coins that they had. They didn't know how to import a coin. They didn't know how to get the contract address or they bought the yep. coin, couldn't find it in the wallet, you know, cause it didn't always import. Now they have, things are getting a little better. Now we'll say, do you want to import yeah. this coin? You know, stuff like that. They didn't have any, even, I can't believe they didn't even have that. Like you'd buy a coin and you'd still have to implement the custom contract address inside of the DeFi protocol just to make sure you could see the coin. You know, uh, we didn't have 100%. chainless when I first started, I was manually doing everything. Like, yeah. I'd get, the, you know, the RPC, right, and, like, the URL, and I'd, I'd put in my decimal numbers, and I'd be implementing all my own, you know, just basically inputting on, you know, not a big deal. It's, you know, it's copy-paste, yeah. but a lot of people couldn't handle that, right? Like, when Binance Smart yeah. Chain first came out, I said, all right, this is how we do it. We got to open up our MetaMask. We have to make sure we have the Binance Smart contract. We're going to get it from here from Binance.com. We're going to import, and people would just, by the time I was, you know, copy-pasting one of the, you know, last few bars, they'd just look at me like, what are you doing? You know, the other day I did it, yeah. and some guys like, that's, that's, you know, that's not how you do it. Like you got to do it through the right <laughs> chain. And I was like, bro, this is how it was done. Like, this is how it was done. Like we didn't have chain list. Now we have chainlist.org if anyone knows and great place to go to just smart people who, who created that. And you can just, you know, import any single contract you want into your MetaMask wallet. Um, again, you're trusting a third party other than your own. So yeah. there's always that, that mm -hmm. risk there, but that's the key. So you're talking about getting us to the next level, right? Each, each, yeah. each and every one of us contributes like, for instance, it took you so long to work on pre-send. Someone else works on something else. Like, we all can't work on the same thing at the same time. If all of us work 100%. together, this is how we get to the next level, right? We know it's faster. We know it's more secure. And we know it's it's far, uh, you know, it's also more convenient. Uh, we just have to take away the fear that gets instilled with people when we start getting into places where they're, they're confused and they don't understand. And what do you mean I'm sending this? And all it takes is one person to send. Sad, I've seen people... Who would have done great, super smart, had the intelligence and one bad transaction and they're just, I'm done with cryptocurrency. I'm not doing that anymore, you know? Yep. Um, and uh, I've seen it happen and you can't really, you can't really argue either because you're like, well, they did lose funds. Like kind of sucks, yeah. you know, like it shouldn't yeah. happen and it did happen. So now yep. were you, um, were you born and raised in Miami? Did you, is that where this all started or have you moved around a lot? You know, uh, I love Miami, by the way, I was just there for Bitcoin Miami um, yeah. stayed at the Grand, I think it was the Grand Beach, Miami, it's way at the end of the strip on 52nd, mm -hmm. really nice, away from all the, yep. you know, the craziness, and I could just take a seven-minute cab ride down to downtown. I had a blast, though, you know, barely saw any police, like, you know, I, it wasn't like, you. Yeah. there wasn't like a cop on every corner staring at you, I saw no crime, people were super happy, yeah. it was like, man, I had a blast, man, I had a blast, but yeah, how did this all start? You get into yeah, cryptocurrency, so, did you buy yeah, Bitcoin was, once, were you an altcoin guy? Yeah. Was it 2015, mm -hmm. 16? I'm so curious. So I bought my first Bitcoin and Ethereum. I bought Ether back in 2014. Mm -hmm. So I've been around for a while. I saw a couple of bull runs, but I didn't really participate that heavily because I was more in the outside of cryptocurrency. I was, first off, I was in college. And then second off, I was like building businesses and stuff. So I didn't have like the mindset to focus on it so i was like okay once i have the ability to focus on it that's exactly what i'll do and so that's exactly what i did once i like got that time back and that's where i took and started like kind of diving into crypto and i was like you know what my skill set is actually i can trade i can do whatever right i can do all that but my skill set is really building businesses, right? Because I've had like many successful businesses outside of crypto, right? I've had a distribution company, a wholesale company. I've done e-commerce. We've done, you know, retail, everything that you can think of. And, you know, I was like, 
feel like we could build a business inside of crypto. So that's exactly what I did with Wolfer Finance. I built the validator company because most people, they want access to those types of investments. Who can afford an Ethereum validator? Like seriously, it's like 40, 50 grand, right? Flux validator, same thing, 40, 50 grand. FTM validator, $250,000 almost. You know, AVAX, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, and we have all of those, and it gives you also diversification. So that's like, all of those are housed in one place for us. So I was like, okay, this makes sense, and then we will kill it over the long run. Yeah, did we? You know, are we killing it right now because of a bear market? No, we're our our assets aren't appreciating on a daily basis like they will in a bull run. But we bought them in the bear market at the bottom. So I mean, I I think our Ethereum position is already up fifty percent pretty crazy. So anyways, my whole point is that I was like, I can build businesses inside of here and actually help people instead of just only helping myself. Right. And I can, let's be, let's, let's be selfish for a second. Right. If pre-sin does become one of those helping usher in a new age in cryptocurrency adoption technologies, then what do you think that does to my bags? Boom, through the roof, right? So whenever a lot of people come into the market, it starts pumping it. You know, the, the bear market turns around, turns bull. We go to the moon. All of my assets appreciate with it. And I'm one of the things that could help kick that off. So I kind of took ownership of my own, I guess, destiny in that sense in creating pre -send. And I saw it as that whenever it was pitched to me just as an idea. And now it's a fully functional software that people can go and use if they want to. And, you know, I encourage people to do that and go see if it's real. Go see if you can, you know, it, everything that I'm saying, make sure that I back it up, right? Go to presend app.presend.io, try the software. You'll see what I'm talking about. So now, yeah, I've been around for a while. <laughs> when you talk about nodes and validators and stuff like that, like yeah. even me, like I'm into mining, but I never owned my own mining. You know, I have a general idea of what a node is, you know, and how it secures the network. But could you explain it to someone that has no idea what we're talking about? Um, and you're 100%. talking about the prices and when you buy a node, do you have to buy tons of the coin? Is that what you're saying? What is the pricing? You said your Ethereum position. So you had to buy Ethereum to get the node. It, just explain how you kind of got all that going. Yeah. So with Wolfer, with Wolfer, basically the, the entire premise was to be a long-term vision. And that's why the way that, and, and I, I know a lot of people aren't going to like this, but then there's going to be some people that understand it and then do like it, but we are going, we are running towards regulation, right? So Wolfer finance and pre both are going to be regular regulated security tokens issued through Akamona.com. And like fully compliant with the SEC. That's how we're funding our companies. So that means everybody has to KYC. Everybody has to AML. That's to protect our business because I don't just want to be here for a year, especially if you're bringing a game changing technology like pre -send that we want to partner up with the Coinbase's, the MetaMask of the world. They're all regulated. So we want to be too, right? And so that's kind of the way that we have Wolfer and Presend set up. They're actually doing CF offerings, which is called crowdfunding. It's a regulated offering. And that's why we're setting those up that way in the coming weeks so that people can understand that we're going to be here for a long time. And it doesn't matter what the SEC chooses to do, right? We're good either way. So if they choose to not do anything, okay, we protected ourselves. If they choose to do something, we protected ourselves. It's, it's nothing's in life like a guarantee. So to go to your point though, with these master and validator nodes, because that's, that's one of those gray areas where we didn't know what was going to happen. So we just wanted to err on the side of caution. What a validator node does is it actually hosts the blockchain. It validates all the transactions. So there's two critical um, key, I guess, factors to a blockchain, right? One of them for proof of work, which basically means people mine, is mining, mining rigs that actually do the algorithmic transact or the algorithmic calculations to unencrypt, decrypt the transactions, and then send them to the nodes. And then there's the master or validator node, which stores the blockchain's data from inception, from day one. Every transaction that's ever happened is stored on every single node. That is so that the blockchain network never goes down. There's a reason why there's thousands of miners and thousands of uh, nodes, and that's because if one of the miners goes down, the other ones are working. If a few of the nodes go down, the other ones are working. And we always have that 
data to show we've tracked the blockchain. That's the whole point of decentralization is showing all that data. Now, what validators do is they validate the transactions as proof of stake, which basically means you stake your funds. So for Ethereum, you have to have 32 Ethereum. You buy them, you lock them up in what's called a stake into a node. It gives you a key store. You run the node on your hardware and you store the blockchain data from inception. Same thing with Avalanche. I do the same exact thing. It's 2000 Avalanche that you have to lock up. So it's over $24,000. And then for FTM, it's 500,000 FTM, which is almost $250,000 at this point. So I think it's actually like 180 or something right now, just due to price fluctuations. Now Flux, same thing. You, uh, you lock up 40,000 tokens for the top tier Flux node, and then you receive Whenever those transactions go through, everybody has to pay gas fees, right? You pay gas in Ethereum, Avalanche, FTM, Binance, Smart, or BNB, whatever it is. We actually receive part of that as the block reward. So it's almost like an on-chain real estate company. I take a bunch of money. I buy a house. My house is the server, right? And then my node is collateralizing my asset, which is you know the money that I put up for it. Then I rent that house out to the blockchain, and then they store a bunch of stuff in it. And then they pay us rent. Um, so that's essentially what Wolfer does. And then for mining, you know, you kind of understand that from what I said previously. But what that hap what happens with mining is you have these really, really powerful computers that basically algorithmically decrypt all of these transactions that are coming through. And then they get paid a portion of that block reward once they have solved that algorithmic block and sent that batch of transactions on to be stored on the nodes. So that's blockchain infrastructure in a nutshell. And that's what Wolf for Finance does. And that's how we make money. So can someone invest in Wolf for Finance? Like in, so if, if you don't have enough money to buy a node, but I will, can I other, so you're going to have a token for this that it's not out yet or mm -hmm. it is out yet. Explain that. So, yeah, cause you kind of touched on it a second. Cause this is interesting. I'm like, mm, yeah. I kind of want to buy a yeah, node or invest crazy. in these nodes. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So yeah, you actually can invest in Wolfer. You can't do it right this second, but what yep. we're doing is we're bringing the regulation crowdfunding offering on Akamona.com, which is a digital tokenized security issuer that is fully compliant, audited, has all the licenses and is approved by the SEC to issue these digital securities. And what a digital security is, this goes for Wolfer and Preeson. They're both doing it at the same time. Um, it's pretty crazy. So what happens is, you go in and you invest your, say you want to invest a thousand dollars, right? And you're like, okay, I want two shares in Wolfer. Each Wolfer share is worth 500 bucks. Um, you basically come in and you say, hey, here's my USDC. You can either invest in USDC on ETH or Polygon, or you can do a bank transfer. And this is all on Akamona's platform. Then you connect whatever Web3 wallet it is that you want to receive your security tokens. And then we issue you what's called a digital security token, which is basically like stock shares, except for they go to your cryptocurrency wallet and you hold them in your cryptocurrency wallet. And these, these will be issued on Polygon blockchain. And what those do is it you have your Wolfer Finance token or your pre-send token on Polygon blockchain inside of your wallet. And then you can essentially be distributed out what are legal, like, and I don't mean to say legal, it literally is legal, um, dividends, profit shares, revenue shares, and things of that sort. And that's why we wanted it to set up like that, because we don't want any, like, I don't know, uh, there, I don't want any gray area, right, where they come in and say, oh, yeah, this is a security. No, it's fine. We'll just make it a security right off the bat, and then you can't say anything later. No, no, uh, super, super smart to do that. I mean, I know everyone wants this privacy and the there's two ways to go, right? Because you have the hardcore people. Oh, you know, we want privacy, yeah. you know. But at the end yeah. of the day, like, here's my take on KYC. You know, yeah, it's fun to be on a, on a non-KYC exchange, I guess. You know, but at the end of the day, like me, I'm getting known. You know what I mean? If you ever, we know now, say you say one thing one way politically. Who knows? Or you just, you know, you sway one way and then someone's like, hey, go look into that guy, right? We've been seeing that a lot yeah. lately. And so next thing you know, you're getting pressed. So to me, it's like, you know, as you get more known in the space, like, it's just like, it's point to me, it's pointless. Like I'll trade, even when I trade non KYC exchanges, I'm printing out the sheet at the end of the year. I'm saying it to my accountant. Like, I'm not trying to yep, beat the tax. I'm not trying to beat the tax, man. It's just pointless. Like death and taxes are going to get you. You might as well just pay them and figure them out, do them the best you can. So I tell everyone, like, 
you know, because KuCoin's going KYC in a couple weeks. It's got a lot of people kind of down. They're saying, oh, you know, where do we trade now? And I'm like, why do we have to trade non-KYC? The sad thing is, is the U.S. isn't letting U.S. customers, like, access some of the biggest exchanges in the world. You know, like, yeah, I started trading Binance.com, you know, in 2017 when no one seemed to care. And it was my main exchange for, you know, three, four years. And then next thing you know, 2020, 2021, I have to find another way to either access the liquidity through a cloud or to do something different, you know, and um, use a VPN. You know, it's like things that, and, and so you, you, you make people feel like bad actors when they're just trying to basically be a part of the system, you know. So I yep. like what you're doing yep. with being KYC right off the bat because it just, you won't be in that courthouse. You won't, or someone, why would I want to be in something and then find out that now I have to sell it? Like I've been in a coin for two years, but yep. now it's not compliant. And like now I, and I got 200 grand of it or something, or I've made my ends and now I can't get out because it's not, reg, it's not regulatory compliant. Super smart. I, I, and like you said, maybe it goes away and you don't have to do it. But we all know from what we're seeing, and especially you're operating in Miami, you're in the United States, like, um, you know, you see all these other people kind of creating coins out of thin air. And I'm like, that may that may look good right now, but what happens when, like, they come for you and they ask you how you were doing and what you were doing and um, how much money you took? And, yeah, it definitely is a smart – I mean, I like what you're doing, man. I definitely – I would want to get into these coins. I would want to get into Wolfer uh, and pre-send. I invest in infrastructure. I invest in things that make sense. You know, that's what I love about yeah. crypto is so many cryptos do so many different things. Like you can call yourself a crypto altcoin guy or, you know, I like to swing trade. I like to invest. And I just research so many projects and I love, you know, every single bull run, I'm always in some type of structurally fundamental project, you know, like, and what I mean by yeah. that is it's, it's like you said, you took your destiny by storm. Like you decided to, make something that helped the, your entire bags get built because it's going to push adoption into the space. Right. So I'm always looking like, Absolutely. that's why I like Adam, even though it's kind of quiet right now, it's, it's an interoptable chain that connects multiple chains, you know, um, chain link still a sleeper, but I still hold some chain link because so many companies still use their Oracle behind the scenes. They don't talk about it, but you'll go into their paper or go deep dive and you'll find out they're using chain link on the back end to connect yeah. to the outside world. So, right? <laughs> Wolfer and Precent are actually both partnered with Chainlink. So it's funny that you mentioned that. See, see, see. Yeah. And people think Chainlink is a dinosaur because it doesn't get talked about because it didn't get memed up like Pepe. That's the issue, yep. too, a little bit. We got Pepe coin and everyone's all excited about the new little coin. But like, it's just a wave of that time. Like, it's yep. an attention getter. Uh, it, it, you know, fun. Someone could say, fine, it brings more people into the space. I'm, I'm open minded. I'm not like a, a meme coin hater. Some people are just like full blown, like, we can't take any of the meme, get them out. I'm like, you know what? Anything that can get, you know, you know, the average person into cryptocurrency through, you know, a funny meme. Oh, yeah, I used to draw that meme. I know that. Oh, you know, whatever it does, yep. uh, I find it's it's good for the space. Now, again, there's probably a lot of people that bought it at the top. But again, that's going to happen in air. People bought the top of Amazon. You know, they try to use yeah. things that happen to any stock against cryptocurrency. You know what I mean? It's risky. It could go here. It's like anything. is. It's all life is risky. You could die tomorrow. So, yep. uh, I love what you're doing, man. Um, this, these are, and this is why I wanted to spotlight you on my channel. I want my channel to be a place where people can find out the information before it happens. Like right now you said you can't even yeah. invest in this yet. Like this is like, this is boiling yeah. hot An infrastructure project, which has a, a, a founder and a CEO that seems like want it more than anyone else really grinding hard. You seem to, you know, you've, you've reinvested your funds back where you, where you put your life into, you don't, uh, you seem like yep. someone that, you know, you'd rather put your money into your business than into your lifestyle. Um, seem like you got that search serial entrepreneurial spirit, which I really, really like. And, and again, when I, and I even like the colors for pre-send, like I'll have my team put it out while we talk about it. They'll put the website, but I like the branding. I like the look, um, the little shield, like the, the way you market it right off the bat. I'm all about it. I like the dot IO. I went dot IO. Mm -hmm. My team forced me to go.com, but I was all dot IO. You know what I mean? Cause like I try to do things before they're cool. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm like. Yeah. I know it's not the hottest thing now, but .io is going to be big, you know? So, like, my first time, I bought CryptoLiver.io. My team was like, no, we need .com for SEO. I'm like, all right. But, like, I still was on the fence. Like, I wanted to be, like, super old, you know, before it happens. But yep. Now, moving forward, is it a big company? Do you have tons of employees? There's a lot of people to track. Is it small? Um, are you mainly based in Miami, or do you travel around the world? Like, how you know, how is your team developed? Like, how do you develop? Like, do you go and research in Dubai? Do you go to, you know, did you go to Bitcoin Miami? Are you at all these events, or are you kind of mainly just grinding at home a lot? 
Yeah. So this was I actually, this was started uh, when I lived in Chicago. So I just arrived in Miami last year. Mm. Uh, it was in around July of last year, but we basically started all of this whenever uh, I started the ball rolling. That's when Wolfer was founded. And that was when Preason was founded was whenever I was in Chicago. Then obviously I came down to Miami and we went to Dubai and I was actually the keynote speaker at World Blockchain Summit uh, 2022. That's actually on my YouTube channel. If anybody happens to you know care and want to watch it, it's like a 30 minute video. So I, I don't expect people to go watch it. Um, and then we we were speaking in And what's the YouTube uh, channel? Well, it's Wolfer Finance is the YouTube channel or is it present? No, it's just Drew Wolfer. Drew Wolfer. Okay. It's your name. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. yeah. Yep. Yep. I make it as easy as possible for people to find me. I don't want to hide anywhere. You know, I'm just like, Hey, I'm Drew Wolfer. Go check me out. Google me, do whatever you want to do. Um, and so, yeah, so I basically went to Dubai was, you know, keynote speaker at the blockchain summit, went to Austin, did a pitch competition, did a panel over there, went to Bitcoin, Miami. My CMO is actually based out of Miami as well. His name's Craig Emsley. You guys can feel free to Google him. He's an absolute legend. Dude is like an Olympian and stuff and swimming. He's monster. Uh, and then our dev, he's actually a Fang dev. He works, uh, he's worked for Facebook, Amazon, uh, Twitch. And then, I don't know, he's worked with a lot of companies, man. He's top level. His name is Jace uh, Azua. And he's an absolute rock star too, because he's the one that built basically the entire infrastructure around all of this, architected everything. Uh, and then obviously I'm the CEO and, you know, I'm based in Miami and, you know, I'll stay in Florida for the rest of my life now, uh, most likely because it was, it was cold in Chicago, man. So yeah, that's kind of where the team is. Yeah. I, I grew up in Boston, freezing cold in the mornings on the way to school, you know, we're, you know, um, we're pretty North with you guys. Um, my dad recently passed and I was going to move to Sarasota, Florida. I actually had like the neighborhood picked out. I had like seven different homes I was looking at and you know, my mom being alone, struggling with the loss of her husband. And you know, my dad just, I had that inclination to stick around Boston. And, um, now I'm like, I had like my plan, like we had planned it for two years. It was like on our way. And now I'm like, well, It'll happen when God wants it to happen. And, you know, so right now I'm, I'm staying local for my, for me too. I don't want to say just for my mom. Like I love my mom, but like I'm the type of, I'm a mama's boy, man. Like I don't feel good unless yep. my family's family's right. You know? So like I wouldn't yep. enjoy myself like sitting there hitting the links at some like, you know, gated community mm -hmm. in Sarasota while knowing my mom's struggling or she was going through something. So like uh, maybe in a year, once everything settles and I'll take her there for the, for the winter or something like that, or maybe we'll still yeah. pull the trigger sometime in October or, you know, September, but um, yeah, I love, no, Florida, I get man. that, man. I can see how you moved to Florida and that you're there Yeah, and you made the big move too. Like you made a big move. Um, you know, uh, that's awesome. And with your company, it's also the place to be right. Mayor Suar yeah. Suarez, right. He's the guy that loves Bitcoin. I mean, he's, he's an entrepreneur, uh, front to mm -hmm. back, right. His dad was an entrepreneur. Yeah. His dad was the mayor of Miami too. Right. So he, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. dude is, uh, you know, he was destined and I like, I, I just like his style. I like the interviews he does. I like his connections. I like what he, I like how he's pushing blockchain forward. So you're in a good spot, man, you know, for what you're Definitely. doing, like probably in the best city in America. Uh, mm -hmm. So I agree, man. I agree. Yeah. So now like the, and, and so I'm looking, looking at your channel too, just so everyone knows, like his latest video, we're talking 36 minutes ago. He's calling out a rug pull that like, and again, these are great videos because you may watch this video and you may have not any known know anything about I won't even mention the name because I want them to see the, the title of the video. But his, his latest video, 36 minutes ago, is about a, a swap that we probably should have seen it coming. Like there, there's some substantial yeah. idea. There's some things there that were red flagging people as to. And so you watch this video and now you can kind of write those things down. And the next time you're going to invest in something, you can look you can look in, you can look for that. Um yeah. Funny. I, I see you jumping off of, uh, or, oh, I see, oh, I see the little girl jump face down into the pool. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's kind of where I made my bones, man. Um, that's kind of how Wolfer, that's funny story is how Wolfer finance became a thing. Right. Because I, my buddy, he, he was a YouTuber and he was like doing all the crypto stuff and he was doing all the oh, time wonderland and climb a Dow and oh, strong yeah, yeah. block. And I was like, bro, don't do that. Like you're going to get wrecked. 
first off with your portfolio and second off, no one's going to take you seriously. Yeah, your later reputation because, is just going to get trounced. Yeah. They like, yeah. So then everybody's like, I started calling out all these Ponzi's schemes, you know, blatant scams or just all out lies and frauds, you know, all the fake notes. Yeah, they just fake make a miners, website. We're going to do this. Like, you're not going to do any of this stuff. <laughs> like, you're just like, yeah. Yeah. And so everybody was like mad at me because I was telling them how all of these nodes like strong block and Thor and blah, blah, blah. They were all fake. And I was like, that's not what a node is. Like I, I run master and validator nodes. It's not a node. What you guys have is not a node. Right. And everybody hated it. And they were like, well, if you're so smart, why don't you make your own? And I was like, that's a good idea. Boom. Wolf or finance. Now we own FTM validator, Ethereum validators, AVAX validator flux. We have like tokens uh that are like securitized or like digital assets in gold and like all this stuff and i was just like you know like they were taunting me thinking that that was going to be a bad thing but it actually got me on my horse i built a business around it and i was like thanks i appreciate that and so we kind of kept calling out all of the ponzi's the rugs and that's kind of how i made my name in the youtube space in a short amount of time and that's how we funded the companies how we'll continue to fund the companies is through that because i think a lot of people they get mad. There's a lot of people that are mad because they're involved, but then there's just as many people that might have been involved had they not watched a video of mine where I called out the mathematical, economical, and possibilities of these projects and was just like, hey, here's the warning signs. Do with that information what you want. And obviously, I do it in a fun and entertaining way, and I make a lot of jokes and stuff like that because that's what YouTube's all about. Um, but at the end of the day, whenever it comes down to business time, it's, it's business time and there's no joking about it. So I, you know, hopefully people understand the separation of entertainment drew and CEO drew, because there's a clear separation to that. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Funny man, story. Yeah. No, uh, business is business, man. And I'll mm -hmm. just get kind of dive in. Um, if I may, hopefully it's not a, uh, some people have a dark past, you know, or, or a past that hurts, but like, was your dad an entrepreneur? Did you see this at home? Like, what kind of got you into business? What got you into starting businesses? Uh, what made you want, you know, I saw my dad's, you know, he ran some of his own businesses on the side a little bit. He didn't get to all the places he wanted to go. I think that I kind of picked up the baton. I was like, oh, I knew kind of what my dad always wanted. I want to keep going this way. But yeah, was there someone at home, uncle, father, brother, anyone that helped push you? What made you want to entrepreneur from a very young age? Because you seem like you're doing very well. And you don't seem too old, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, uh, so my dad actually did run like a very small construction business. It wasn't anything crazy. It was just enough to, you know, get by, pay the bills and he didn't have to work for anybody else. Right. And then I also had an uncle that was an entrepreneur. He, he got, he's actually pretty successful, um, right place, right time type of stuff. And then he actually owned a plastics company and yeah, he did very well for himself and that's, but that wasn't really my inspiration. My inspiration was that, I never, I just wanted to not ever struggle in life. And then I went and did all the things that you're supposed to do. Right. And I did them a little later than most people. I'll admit, like whenever I was a young, young person, anywhere from, you know, 16 to 22, 23 years old, I was just as lost as anybody else in the world. And I, you know what I mean? But you got to get it right. So I did go to school a little bit later, but I did everything that everybody was supposed to do. You know, I was like, okay, I got good grades. I got a good ACT score. I got, you know, uh, college scholarships for academics and, you know, played soccer, blah, 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 and did all that stuff in college. And, you know, got good grades, graduated, went and got a job at a fortune 100 company. And then I just realized I was like, man, am I going to do this until I'm like 65, 70 years old? Cause I'm cool with that. I really want to see the world. I feel like we weren't here. We weren't put here to just work, you know, eight, eight hours a day, sleep eight hours a day, but you know, commute three hours a day to get to your job and then only get a few hours with your family and then spend your whole life doing that and then just rinse and repeat. And then you only get like a third of your life on the back end whenever you're already, you know, for lack of a better yeah, word, your hips on the downhill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like I want to like when, I, I mean, I proposed to my wife, I proposed to her in Greece. We climbed Mount Olympus, man. I want to do that stuff. I'm not waiting until I'm 67 to go climb Mount Olympus. Not happening. It, it just wouldn't happen. I would have to, you know, drive my wheelchair up, right? So I just saw it as an opportunity. I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I've always you know, kind of done my own thing. And I took the money from uh, my corporate job, the fortune 100 company it was Liberty mutual, by the way. And I basically saved up all my money. I started up my own business. And then once it reached like a seven figure a year revenue, 
out left never went back right and i was just like thank you for the opportunity i appreciate it you guys helped accelerate me forward and you were absolutely a stepping stone to get me to where i am today but i wouldn't change it anything that has happened in my life not one bit uh because everything was a culmination of everything previously to get me right here to this exact moment and i'm thankful and grateful for it all yeah amen i'm the same way i was in tv for years um, you know, yeah, I started nice. basically just like doing like the, the mailing job, you know, like just things would come into a mailing, a mailing sh shop after out of college, you know, and then I got into commercials. I got into editing. I did video editing, sat in front of two screens for hours a day, you know, and you could make good money. You could make, you know, a hundred, hundred bucks an hour at one point, you know, you can make double time, $180 an hour. Like, it's like, you know, but I just kept looking like I could finally make 200 grand a year and I'll sit in front of these two screens for 10 hours a day and I'll get. Yep. A 40 minute lunch. And I just, you know, I, I started seeing myself 34, 35, 36. I'm 40 years old. I just turned 40 in April. And I said, man, I'll be 50 years old soon. I'll be depressed. I said, this isn't, mm -hmm. and I went into school for film. Like I did what you were supposed I was even a little different than most people. Like I had a dream. I went after it somewhat, you know, I didn't go all the way, but I like was in what I wanted to do. Right. I was in TV, yep. but, uh, I just kept looking at people who were flying, traveling, you know, getting paid to talk at events. And I said, that's, I want to be there. I want to influence. I want to, you know, I want to be out there. Uh, I want to be well-spoken. I want to hit that stage and I want to create, you know, every single day I want to create like my live show. I do every day. I created it. I, I, I just, there's something about, you know, the desk, just, you know, you, your regular job, the desk is just sitting there with your boss, with a list of things already waiting for you to do. You're not creating money. I mean, you could be somewhat creative in the process. Right. But at the end of the day, it's like, I got these amount of tasks or I got to edit this video for this person, get it done. And the video editing was fun. Don't get me wrong. I was super creative and yeah. I loved it. But like you said, it got to a point where I needed a stepping stone. It was ready for me to move on to something different. And I also believe in God fully, man. Like, like things happen for, and it's like my life got aligned at the exact time where I needed it to pandemic, all that happened. Also investing into cryptocurrency early. I didn't get to Bitcoin as early as you, but I got into it around a thousand bucks, you know, I knew what Ethereum was. That's when it was, a win. Yeah, I knew when it was. When That's it was a, a huge it was, win. Yeah, when it was nine dollars, some guys like buy Ethereum. It's I'm one of the developers, and I said, "What is this?" And he showed me Coin Market Cap on the streets in New York City. Next thing you know, I'm on that site every day. Then I started buying Tron just because I saw the movie and I thought it was cool. I was like, "Oh, this is a cool, you know, Tron." Right? And it went from like two cents to twenty cents. It like shut down Binance one day. Like everyone was trying to buy yeah. it. Like Binance like couldn't move. I couldn't see my orders. Like I don't know if they sold their I was just like trying to get out at one point. I think I sold the 14. It went to 27. But at that point, you were just lucky to have actually had an order fill. It was out of control. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Segwit 2X with Bitcoin. I don't know if you remember that when people were like, which or if it was going to be Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin. And like at one point, Bitcoin yeah. was like six grand. Bitcoin Cash was like 2,700. The miners were going yeah. back and forth. It got crazy. I was like, which one is yeah. going to be Bitcoin? I'm like, this is like, yeah. uh, so now that that's kind of out the water, like we know what Bitcoin, what the Bitcoin is going to be. So mm -hmm. man. And that's, again, that whole thing that I just discussed is like the, we throw ourselves into cryptocurrency. There's no manual, right? We're starting to get there. But when me and you got in, there's no manual. There's no one to hold your hand. There's nothing. There's no such thing as pre-send at all, like yeah. at all. Right. Uh, so yeah. you'd be lucky to figure out how to buy the crypto totally, before, you know, well, how to get to the exchange or, you know, when I started getting in, people were like, all right, like, like, I remember I met an old guy and he's like, all right, explain it to me. Like, how do I get where you're at now? Like, I want to buy that coin. And like, I remember I'd start the process and I think it's so simple, but when I explained it to someone new, I was like, all right, you're going to open up a Coinbase. I'm like, you're going to have to attach your bank account. Don't worry. I've done it for years. It's trustworthy already. They're like, attach my bank account. Like what the? So you get them over that, right? That takes five to seven days for verification sometimes. Like now they got that. Now they have to buy USD. Now that takes five to seven days because it's a Swift system from the, right? Uh, sometimes there's a thousand yep. bucks, for, but like it's like a minimal. If you really wanted to buy like 10 grand, 20 grand, it's like a wait. Now it's been 10 days, let's say, if they're lucky. They finally have access to the funds. You know, they buy the US tether. I'm like, now you got to send the tether over to KuCoin. You know, and they're like, wow. I'm like, yeah, because yeah, Coinbase doesn't have like a lot of the, you know, I was like, now you yeah. have to buy BNB on KuCoin. Now you have to send the BNB mm -hmm. to your MetaMask wallet. And they, by the time, I'm, they're just like, and I remember doing a whole list for this one man because he was like 78. And he was like, I need you to teach me. Like, And I was like, all right, so you're going to go yeah. here. Then you're going to go there. And I was doing pictures of everything. And like, once you confirm mm -hmm. that, you're going to go. And it's like, and I was like, this is, once I was done, I was like, this is nuts. Like, like yeah, I'll like, do this it. this sucks. <laughs> I could do this, but like, I'm a nerdy guy that likes playing with computers. Like, 
not everyone wants yeah. to do what I what I'm doing. So you're doing you know, a huge service. Got to make the, it as easy as possible. Yeah, you're doing a huge service for the industry. You make me think, damn, Sam, there's something you could create and make that you could invest in that could help people too, and that could help the yeah. whole infrastructure and my own bags. Like you said, I liked how you were like, let's be selfish for once here. Um, yep. Everyone wants to eat. Yeah, there's stay- no altruism in the world, man. There's no altruism. Everyone wants to eat and stay clothed, right? At the end of the day, like. So we're all somewhat selfish at the end of the day. When I, when I do something, I need to make money so I can, you know, take care of my family. If you can align your selfish needs to other people's needs, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. um, that's why I like teaching. I found I had this bug for teaching people. Hey, if people want to pay me an hourly rate to learn what I learn, I'd love to, I'd love to give it to you. And I know I can save you years of your life because I've been through yep. it all already. You know what I mean? And you yep. won't have to deal with the pain and the anguish that I've gone through. And so mm-hmm. you give me some value, I save you time, and you get value, and together we can kind of co-create and continue to exist together. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, this is amazing, man. You really broke down kind of where you came from, kind of what what makes you tick. Um, I love your yeah. YouTube channel. I'm going to keep watching your videos as they keep coming up. Super informational. <laughs> no, that video is yeah, huge that you funny. put out. As funny as it may be a joke and something, you know, you want to use some uh, entertainment in YouTube. But there's some yeah. deep information there that could probably save other people from getting rugged in the future. So, again, yeah. um, you know, kind of paying it forward there with that last video. So, Drew, man, I've had a yeah. blast, bro, getting to know you. Really, yeah. really good That's time. Right. Uh, I'm going to start posting, you know, showing uh, pre-send more on my channel. I, I remember looking at it like a month ago, and then I've, I kind of like it like slipped my mind. So I'm going to start using it more, talking yeah. about it a little more, giving you some free promotion whenever I get the chance. Uh, anything you want to say, it, where, where can people find you? You already said a little yeah. bit, but just kind of sum it up one more time. If they're about to write down or they're about to leave the stream and they want to know where can they find you, uh, you know, where, where are you, pre- can they, can they DM you? Are you, are you, are you available for questioning and stuff like that? And um, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, that's it. And any, any last thing you want to say kind of for the space and for the people listening? No, I just, you know, like I said before, man, just, I'm humbly appreciative of just being able being in the position that I'm in. You know, I'm very grateful um, and you know, it's, we live in a really great com- country where things like this can happen. And I just, I appreciate that a lot. And I appreciate people showing up to actually, they actually care what I have to say, which is really cool and wild to me, but yeah. So what you can, the places that you can find me is obviously you can find me on YouTube. It's just my name, Drew Wolfer. And, um, you can also find me on Twitter and my name is just Drew underscore Wolfer. Everything's always my name. You can Google me. You'll find all my social medias. You'll find every article probably ever written about me. And, um, yeah, man, I, I just, I don't really open my DMS up because if I do, I get 70 million people saying like, Oh, Hey, call out this rug, call out this pond or whatever and i'm just like hey i'm i am still i know i have a social presence to a certain extent but i am still the ceo of two companies that i have to run every single day um so it gets a little monotonous uh sometimes being able to answer people's questions but yeah feel free to you know drop me a line drop it in the comment section uh drop it on any of the you know posts that we do on twitter you know join the wolfer and the pre-send discords they're you know very simple to find you can just go to our websites wolfer finance or pre io and uh yeah everything's on there man so we're very open and and transparent about everything that we do and i think that's how it should be done and yeah anybody can come and inquire and find anything else out, else out about me that they want to amazing amazing there it is everyone presend.io wolfer finance your man drew wolfer check him out on all the social media sites and look at his new products that he's coming out with we're going to be able to invest in them. I'll talk about them again when we can invest in Wolfer Finance and stuff like that. We'll talk about the tokens. I'm sure we'll have you back on the channel as that starts to progress. So uh, thank you, everyone, for coming on in today to the price report. I hope you got a lot of good information. I did. Honestly, these are conversations I would have alone. I'm just bringing you guys along for the ride. And uh, these are questions and answers that I want to know and things that I learn every single time I do one of these interviews. So uh, keep coming back every week. I'm going to keep asking the, the hard questions and we're going to get the good answers to help you understand cryptocurrency and blockchain even better.